Hi, this is Heather White. Welcome to iHeartMedia Communities. I'm here with Misty Potter from the Boys and Girls Club of Austin, the Austin area. Hi, Misty. Welcome. Good morning. How are you? I am terrific and very happy to have you here. So let's talk a little bit about Boys and Girls Club and what you guys do and who you serve. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. Um, so here in Austin, we are 53 years old um, or wow. 53 years young, whichever you, way you want to look at it. Uh, we uh, have on a normal year, you know, everything has to be um, emphasized or asterisked with post yeah. or pre-COVID, um, yeah. 32 club sites. And so we're looking for 2021. Actually, we should have 27 club sites open. Uh, we serve a little over 9,800 members per year and about 3,000 wow. kids per day. So uh, we are, we're busy with kids every single day in our shared space in our schools. We're in our housing developments. And then, of course, we opened our home club a little over a year ago. And that's really been the, the strong foothold for us in this community during everything that we've been going through. So speaking of everything that we've been going through, how has COVID affected you guys? Yeah, and initially it was one of those things where everything shut down so abruptly mm -hmm. and um, the schools didn't go back at spring break. And so we had to figure out how we were going to get the boys and girls clubs to our kids since we couldn't get the kids to the clubs anymore. Um, so within about 72 hours, we flipped our entire fundraising and service delivery model to a program called Club on the Go. And we started filling bags and they were activity bags that were, um, they had meals in them for the kids. Oh, and they wow. had activities that tied to our DIY videos that's on our YouTube channel. Um, so to date, we have given out over 54,000 bags, oh my uh, goodness. which totals to a little over 500,000 meals and over 7,000 supplies to the kids. So actually, you know what, let's talk about that a little bit, because I think that people don't realize shutting down the schools really affected the kids' meals. Yeah, it did. Um, you know, a lot of our kids, and it is very true, um, there's, a, there's a huge pocket of young people in our community. Uh, there's a little over 105,000 children that live at or below the poverty line in, throughout our MSA, throughout the Austin MSA. Um, and those kids, a lot of times, the last meal they have is on Friday when they leave school. So unless they're going to a boys and girls club or they're going to some other out of school time program, they're not getting any other substance or at least caloric intake that is adequate enough for a child over the next two days. So think about shutting down the school for weeks on end. Now you have kids who really aren't getting anything. And even though the yeah. schools were doing food distribution and they were doing what they could, there in the very beginning, there really wasn't, we didn't have a plan. No one yeah. was ready or prepared for that. No one could have prepared for it. Um, so we had the ability to just start doing what we could. And we were putting anywhere from five to 10 meals in these club on the go bags and giving them out. We were having pizza distributions. We had partners um, that stepped up and donated pizza. So we were giving full on dinners to families uh, for weeks on end. And I think we're now in what week 38 since all of this started. And we thought okay. it was only gonna be a two week Right. You know, Band-aid to get us to where we could get back to living. Um, and it has kind of become a, a way of life, unfortunately, uh, until we can get everybody back to normal again. And so what's it done for your fundraising? It's really, I'm sure, just turned your year on its head. It did. Uh, so I think like every other nonprofit out there, anyone that had any kind of face-to-face -face event coming up, it was canceled. Yeah. Um, so in March, um, our first fundraiser of the year was supposed to have happened in May, which would have been our largest luncheon. Um, right. It's typically a seven to 800 person luncheon and it was canceled. Then our duck derby was canceled. Duck then derby. Our, we love the duck derby. So much fun. And hopefully we can do it again in the future, but you couldn't gather. Right. right. So uh, we had to cancel that. And then our golf tournament was supposed to be at top golf. Um, we, changed that into what we're calling a progressive golf tournament. So progressive meaning it's being played over three months at different golf courses. Okay. So kind of innovative, kind of crazy, right? a little difficult, but still able to raise a little bit of money off of it. And from what we've heard, the golfers are having a ball. Okay. Uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and you know, most, our biggest fundraiser though has been our gala every year. It's, it's been a million dollar gala for us the past three years and we had to cancel it. Um, so what we did, though, is changed it into, uh, I think, kind of what we're here to talk about today, too, which is our Youth Can Do It 
uh, event, which is um, taking the place of our gala. Okay. And so our Youth Can Do It event is coming up November 13th. So mm -hmm. let's get into the fun. Tell yeah. us all about it. So really, it's, this is just kind of our, our way of telling our story and, and getting our message out there. Um, it launched, actually, I think it launched last night with you all on mm -hmm. many of your platforms. You've started promoting it for us. Uh, we're really promoting the opportunity to sponsor. It, it is a scholarship, but it's really making sure a kid can come to a Boys and Girls Clubs for an entire year. So the cost That's to come fantastic. to the a Boys and Girls Club for those who can pay is $25 a week. Okay. Um, or $100 a month or $1,200 a year. So you literally could sponsor a child a week, a month, a year, however you wanted to do it. So that's kind of the, the idea for the fundraising component of this event. Um, we do have some sponsorship levels, but really it's a, it's a media takeover um, over the net starting really starting next week. Mm -hmm. um, and then culminating event on the 13th. So on the 13th, it's all iHeart, it's all on television with KXAN, it's um, we're drawing for our raffle that night, live on uh, the news. Um, in that evening. So there's just a lot of things going on that are tied to that. Our goal really is to sell 2,000 raffle tickets. Okay. Um, which would bring in $200,000. Awesome. And so, I mean, obviously that's a, a huge slide from the million dollar goal that we would typically have for a gala. Um, but we tried a different platform, right? So we're not doing online. We're not doing the online gala like everybody has been having to pivot every, all of their in-person to has been online. And it's worked really well for some and it's been complete disasters for others. So we kind of hedged our bets on this and we'll see how it goes. Um, so we're doing everything on radio and television. We'll, we'll see right. and, and social media. So right. we kind of have all three different mediums going at it. So we'll see how we do. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun. I think it's a nice approach because everybody has done everything virtually and i think that this is a different approach and i think that it's nice to have um, a way to get to know you guys and to get to know what boys and girls clubs do and you know kudos to you all for not closing your doors um i really think that that has to have had a huge impact on so many kids um god just the meals i mm -hmm. mean that was one of the first things I thought of because having done what I've done for so many years and having done the public affairs shows and, and done so much stuff with hunger and, and dealing with um, food insecurity and that term, um, so many kids, God, I think, you know, so many of us are, goodness, we're overweight. We're never hungry. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's not ever anything. My kids are not ever going hungry. It's not anything we ever worry about. And and I know we always have Sid Miller on from the Department of Agriculture on, and he talks about summer meals and mm -hmm. get fed. And, and that was one of the first things I thought of when they shut the schools down. I thought, oh my God, all these kids are not going to get fed. And what are mm -hmm. they going to do? So good job, boys and girls. Thank you. And, and that's, that's a true worry, you know, yeah. and we, we surveyed our parents in the beginning of, of the shutdown and over 98% of our families had one or more um, of the adults in their home unemployed. Yeah. So if there just was nothing for them. And so we knew we, we honestly, we just knew we had an absolute moral obligation as the boys and girls clubs to step up and provide for those who needed it most, which are our kids and our families. And um, I think to date, it's been over 4,600 families. Yeah. That, you know, we've been able to make sure have something, you know, I, we're not providing four course meals, but um, it's, something it's the caloric intake for a kid that they need where can people go to get involved and where do you so are we selling raffle tickets what are we buying raffle tickets for i want to go buy raffle tickets yeah so the raffle is actually pretty awesome um and unfortunately i'm not eligible or i would have bought raffle tickets <laughs> um it looks really bad if the ceo wins <laughs> i don't think i can draw my own name no nope. um I could, but it probably didn't go over well. Um, yeah, so go to bgcaustin.org and the very first banner is the Youth Can Do It banner. Uh, and you can go in there, you can, you can sponsor a child for, like I said, the, the 2,500 or 1,200. You can buy as many raffle tickets as you want. And let me tell you why you want to. Um, we're only selling 2,000 of them. Excellent. First and foremost. So chances are incredible, right? Um, they're $100 each and first prize is a trip to a private island in Belize. Oh my gosh. For four people with airfare. Wow. Um, yeah. 
And then second prize is a weekend at the Commodore downtown Austin. Oh my goodness. And then third prize is, um, is a weekend in Marfa and, and oh, a really nice wow. place in Marfa. So, right. So little staycation, we'll get out in the countryside in Texas yeah. and then one head to Belize for the week. Neat. Yeah. That's so incredible. really, really cool prizes, um, for a hundred bucks and that hundred bucks also sponsors a kid for a month. So, you know, the bottom line is you can help a kid and then hopefully, you know, get your name in the hat to win a really cool prize. Neat. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. Go to bgcaustin.org. That's it. Yeah. And you can also just donate there out of the goodness yeah. of your heart. Help kids out. That's fantastic. Misty Potter, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day. You too. And go find out about the Boys and Girls Clubs and help out. And maybe you'll end up going to Belize or Marfa or, hey, downtown Austin. That's fantastic.